Tonight's episode of America's Hometown Horror is brought to you by our friends at Fangoria Magazine. That's right, the first name in fright since 1979 is now an affiliate of America's Hometown Horror. And because of that, we can now offer you an exclusive 20% discount on any first-time magazine subscription or merchandise purchase by heading over to shop.fangoria.com and using the code HOMETOWNHORRORPOD at checkout. That's shop.fangoria.com slash HOMETOWNHORRORPOD or just use the code HOMETOWNHORRORPOD at checkout for that exclusive discount on anything from Fangoria. Tonight's episode of America's Hometown Horror is also brought to you by our friends at Horror Fact magazine never heard of horror facts magazine well if you're a horror fan they're a name that you absolutely should know you can find them over at horrorfacts.com and they're a great resource for all things horror including news reviews editorials and lots of other horror podcasts not only limited to but including america's hometown horror so head on over to horrorfacts.com and check them out last but certainly not least if you want to support america's hometown horror directly i would highly recommend you get yourself some tickets to the hometown haunts and hops horror convention which will be taking place at mayflower brewing company in lovely plymouth massachusetts for the first time on october 20 of this year. Yes, that's right, folks. The Saturday before Halloween, we're partnering with our friends over at Inebriart to put this event on, and you can buy yourself some tickets by going to inebriart.com, go to their events page, pull up their October calendar, and get yourself some $5 tickets to the Hometown Haunts and Hops Horror Convention, which is now sponsored by HalloweenNewEngland.com. HalloweenNewEngland.com is the website for the truly Halloween-obsessed, with the most extensive guides to New England haunted houses, ghost tours, classic horror film screenings, jack-o'-lantern festivals, haunted hayrides, and more. They've got all the thrills covered throughout September and October. With over 2,500 Halloween events on their events calendar, and hundreds of local Halloween attractions. It's the only place you'll find everything from haunted history tours and costume contests to witch haunts are open on a Thursday night. No matter what you're looking for this Halloween season, HalloweenNewEngland.com has you covered and we are thrilled to be partnering with them. Now, let's get on with the show. and welcome into another episode of America's Hometown Horror. My name is Mike. I'll be your host on this journey through horror podcast land. And of course, I am not alone on this journey. I am joined by my fellow co-hosts, Matt, Kat, and Andrew. Lady, gentlemen, hello. 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 I keep forgetting you don't have to do the uh, whole sh- the whole spiel. I know. I know. It's just kind of I'm about, falling asleep now. Kind of nice. <laughs> Is it sped up? It's uh, when, when it's on like that, uh, when you listen to it. I believe that uh, our guy. Or did guy, you just nail it? <laughs> I think our guy does actually speed it up oh, a little okay. bit. All of our stuff. But uh Oh really? Yeah. So, uh, so we don't talk that. Though. While we're, while we're talking about this, uh, good good time to mention that uh, all of our audio and music production <laughs> is now being done by our friend Shauna with Skywheel Media, who's doing a great job with the show. If you have a podcast that you're looking to take to the next level, get in touch with us. We'll put you in touch with Skywheel Media, who will have a website coming soon for audio and podcast production. He's been doing a great job w- with us, and we're super thrilled with what we have. Thank uh, you, Shauna. Thank you, Shauna. So. See you at Haunts and Hops, Yay! my friend. Do we that big wheel tickets? turning, baby. Yeah, more uh, more info on Haunts and Hops in a second here. But uh, if you're interested in finding us online, first place is our website, apod.com. That's A-H-H-P-O-D.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for America's Hometown Horror. You'll find us. You can also email us at hometownhorrorpodcast at gmail.com. And yeah, that's what I got there. But I just teased at the top, guys. Hometown Haunts and Hops. Everything is coming along very nicely. We're uh, getting to be a little bit more than a month out from the whole thing. And we happen to get a great shout out from our friends at Bloody Disgusting posting an article about Hometown Haunts and Hops. Yay! Also an article from our friends at HorrorFacts.com. So a couple different places, but who wrote awesome, that article, by the way? Awesome yes. to see some publication uh, for Hometown Haunts and Hops on uh, horror fan websites. Uh, that was put together by me and uh, also Andy from Inebriart. Oh, uh, nice. well, nice yes. work. Still, though, very nice, very well written, Michael. Very nice. Thank you, Stop. Thank you, thank you, thank quite you. the wordsmith. Um, Andy kind of gave me some facts about what we were looking to do, and I kind of tied it all together. I kind of wrote it into a. Yeah, but you gave it that pizzazz. Yeah, you did. It was juicy. I also had that connection. Juicy. Because I've, you know, obviously uh, been a published, done author. some work with them before. So thank you again to our. Friends. It was cool for them to share. It, it was awesome. awesome. Sure yeah, right. honestly, That's I so cool. when I uh, when I reached out to them about it, they were more than happy to share it. They were like, "Yep, uh, we will absolutely do it." 
because not only you know have I worked with them before, we have a bloody disgusting podcast network podcast doing a live show at our event, yes. uh, Hometown Ghost Stories, who I was not aware until we started planning this event. They're a Massachusetts-based podcast. Um, It'll be you know, fun to meet them. Yeah, yeah, should be good. They're doing a live show at the event, just like we are. And uh, they we might even have some coverage from Bloody Disgusting at the event as well. So Cool. We'll see looking, that. I'm looking forward to kissing oh, some uh, hands yeah. and shaking some babies that night. <laughs> wow. Right, well, you will not wow. be holding yeah, Layla. Yeah, so. you, won't, you won't be anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, I feel like it just keeps getting more and more exciting as we get closer and closer to the event. And um, I can also announce that I, I didn't even have this written down, that leading up to Haunts and Hops, Matt and I mm. will be doing horror trivia at Mayflower Brewing Company. First of which, uh, first session of which I should say is a week from this Thursday. So a week from when this episode comes out, which would be September 21st. Mm -hmm. September 21st, we'll be at Mayflower Brewing Company doing horror trivia, uh, offering a lot of prizes, including tickets to the event, a free tasting and tour of Mayflower Brewing Company and probably some other prizes as well. So yeah. Matt, uh, we've already started working on this. Yes. It should be a lot of fun. I have uh, I have my, I've started it. I'm going to continue the rest of the first night's full questions tomorrow. And then we'll yeah. send them through. I'm going to make sure that they are not too easy, not too difficult and kind of curate them as is. And then I'll do a whole new set the same way for the second one, yep. which will be later, uh, middle October. By the time you're listening to this episode, there should be a social media post for this episode. If, this, if you're listening to this episode, right yeah. now, the day it comes out, it's my birthday. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh shit. Wait, Happy wow. birthday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday will be my birthday. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Happy wow. birthday! No, right, hey, 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 say it. Say it. No, Happy I'm just kidding. Oh, is this, <laughs> is this the big three? Nope. Zero? No. One more year. Not quite. Fresh, not quite. Savor. Like a little baby. baby. A little Savor. baby. One more year. Well, when you guys do the year uh, Trivia, I'm going to show up in disguise so I can win the prize, baby. Okay, there you go. Well, I'm not going to send you the questions. Yeah, so. but it's still, <laughs> it still would be weird if I won. Well, you wear that question. wig. if you're. Uh, you can just come and be our, stuff. like, Igor Third and wheel. hand out paper and you can. Well, I'm not going to come if you're going to call me Igor. <laughs> I, mean, I, I might snap pencils in yeah. people's faces. I love that. Yes. Yeah, nice drawing. Oh, here's your pencil. Yeah. Break it. Give him the broken side. Yeah, here's the Figure it out, side. loser. Do you have a sharpener? Do you snap? Uh, speaking of things in Plymouth, you guys, we got last week after we recorded that uh, finally we got a trailer for Eli Roth's Thanksgiving movie. It's just Ooh. called Thanksgiving, which is, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody else knows anything, that this is the first Plymouth set horror movie ever. Granted, it's going to be a village. <laughs> granted, it's going to be a fictionally filmed a fictional village. Plymouth. No, The Witch was. Oh, The Witch. Sorry. I meant The Witch, not The Village. But uh, Eli Roth teased this movie in a trailer in uh, Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez's Grindhouse double feature years back. And he's been trying to get this movie made for a long time. And his intention the entire time was to have it take place in yeah. Plymouth, which obviously this is where America's, it's America's hometown. This is where Thanksgiving was born. And we do have the biggest Thanksgiving parade in America, arguably. So he wanted to tie That's that into, Macy's Day is pretty big. Uh, Macy, well, <laughs> other than Macy's Day, yes. Uh, other than that. Channel 5 um, has run. But he wanted, to tie it in, he wanted to tie it into a Massachusetts town. So here we are. And uh, it was all but confirmed in the trailer that uh, we get a nice little overhead shot, a uh, drone or a helicopter shot of downtown Plymouth. In oh, the trailer, maybe they see us. Pretty cool. Oh my god! Yeah. I was just saying. Yeah, I, I sent Eli Roth a message. <laughs> as did I. Yeah. And, I did uh, message him, and I was like, "Hey, just so you know, like we're from Plymouth, blah blah." I said things about the podcast, and I was like, "We'd be willing to just be extras, just laying in blood for free." Mm -hmm. <laughs> did he respond? No, of course yeah. not. Okay, good. Because since he didn't respond, can I make a prediction? Uh -oh. Movie's going to be absolute fucking trash. Is we'll see. Guess. I hope not. We should, I, hope, I hope not. This is the anniversary of Cabin Fever getting released today. I hate Eli Roth. So. You don't like Cabin Fever? No, not really. Wow. I like Cabin, Cabin Fever's good. I actually really like Cabin Fever. Like Hostel's but. mediocre at best. I like Hostel, too. I love Hostel. That's it, though. Green I Inferno's really, the I worst like Green Inferno. Inferno. And I really, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a big advocate for Cannibal Holocaust. I don't know he is, too. Yeah, but, but I, I don't like Green Inferno. 
And he had an uh, earthquake movie called Aftershock that also was not good. I um, earthquake movie. That's right. I think he's married to um, what's her face though? That that girl that's like them. Uh, she, one of the girls from Knock Knock. Yes, yeah, so well, he directed that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, one of the girls. From the one that's not on a dare Moss. I forget her name off the top of my head. I feel bad because she's a, she's actually does a good job in the movie she's in. She's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood too. That's right. She's the Italian she's, actress. Uh, yeah, she's uh, yeah. Uh, Leo's yep. wife. Yep. When he comes back from Italy yep. after doing God, I love that movie so much. But yeah, I uh, I'm excited for this movie just because solely because it takes place in Plymouth. I feel like it's a movie that we're gonna have yeah, to cover on the show. Sure. Oh, I'll, 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 I'm just making a prediction. It's probably it might not be true. We'll, we'll, we'll see. You'll like it. When is we'll it see how out? it goes. Uh, it's coming out on uh, November seventeenth. So this right this year, this year, oh, right? Paint me pink and cool. Oh. Yeah. So we have uh, we have an episode for that week covered. We'll have to be there opening night. Yeah. Babysitter. Time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So right now. that's just, that's a uh, yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. Um, I got some quick hit new stuff for us, real quick here. So uh, in addition to that, uh, we also got trailers for the Fall of the House of Usher series on Netflix, which is the newest offering from Mike Flanagan. Looks pretty good, uh, or from the images I've seen, it looks pretty good. Have not seen this trailer yet, uh, but anything that Mike Flanagan does, I had him on my horror director's draft I'm interested in, so we'll see how that goes. Love Edgar Allan Poe, so that should be pretty cool, I hope. Uh, they also dropped a trailer today for Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, and it all but confirmed oh, that's that why I kept seeing pictures it of that. is the Judd Crandall origin story, mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool. You know what show looks pretty sick? Um, I think it's an Apple show. Is that God, uh, oh Godzilla the Godzilla show with Kurt Russell? Yes. That looks pretty oh, that's sick. a show. I thought yeah, it was a movie. Oh, no. oh yeah, it's on a show. Apple it looks sick, I and I'm like, I don't have Apple Plus. And the coolest thing is I'm that never, it has, I'm it's, never going to have. Not only does it have Kurt Russell, it has his son Wyatt Russell playing him as a younger man in the uh, uh, ooh, decades prior. Dadception. Cool. Yeah, normally not like too. Like most Godzilla movies, man, I find them whatever. Oh, dude, I have all the real, like, I have like, <laughs> like the, the original ones. I have from, it's like the Criterion collection from like the first one. It's like 15 movies. You get all the old, old Japanese ones, dude. They're honestly, they're cheesy, but they're still great. Yeah. Like they, they, there's a reason they're on the Criterion collection. I think Mecha Godzilla is the, yeah, I got it. The, no, but he's the, that's the best Godzilla. You know, like Mothra? Mothra? No. I'm a fan of the new Godzilla and King Kong movies. That whole shit. They're good. Oh, yeah. that, that, good. No, but that yeah. last Godzilla movie sucked so bad. Godzilla v Kong. Yeah, I didn't like that. Either. It was okay. What about the 2001 with Matthew Broderick? Um, <laughs> no. Dude, it was just a giant iguana. Yeah, yeah. that was, was that uh, Emmerich. Em- Emmerich. Roland Emmerich of uh, Independence Day. Yeah. Not not a great creature design, which I feel like no. was the downfall of it. But there was yeah, it was like a big lizard. Some interesting <laughs> stuff in it. I don't know. That's a a fr- it was discussion. a French lizard too. For a different day. I think it was a French iguana. Andrew, here's one for you. Recently, the director of Winnie the Pooh, I know, Blood and one, Honey. Yeah. Announced that there's going to be a sequel. Oh, we already knew that. Okay, and I'm but watching. The, like, yeah, the, the budget is much higher this time around, Ooh. and they dropped this week a look at Owl and Tigger. See, Ooh, I'm so both. excited! All fucking time I was waiting. Going to be in a sequel, and uh, Tigger looks pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, if you've seen actually, no, I haven't. I want to see that. Like Tony the Tiger. Yep, Tony the Tiger. Dude, it's I'm, way scarier. You just like, got blood flakes. I'm, I'm so just ready to pick up my phone and look at it, but I shouldn't right now. No, nope, so not quite. A, I'll go down a wormhole. Of... But look at it. Look at it later. These are all. Oh, these are going to be guys put thirty up. years from now. These will be cult classics. All right, just put, put a pin in that. Look yeah. at uh, look at Tigger and Owl later when you get a chance. Is Tanger or Rue or Rabbit on there? Uh, all I've heard is that it's going to so be owl. Tigger and Owl. Okay. And they're, still, they're probably going to make a third one and introduce everybody else. You still haven't seen it. It's streaming. I'll watch it. No, I haven't. You have to watch like. It's What's terrible. Oh, it's, it's, I think it's streaming it's now. Streaming it's streaming on what? It's got to be. I think I no. saw it Amazon the other day. Prime, no. maybe. No. I haven't seen it. Because like I would watch it again just because I want to see I... if I actually think it was actually good. I thought it was fine. It might... what, but it's it's entertaining. I it might say. be on H. H- yeah, if you thought it was fine, you'll like this Thanksgiving movie, I think. I know, I probably will, but I just, I have a deep, weird Maybe hatred not. for it. I don't no, know. Well, no, no, can... no. Andrew also has a deep-seated love for Winnie the Pooh. Oh, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, it tickles my bone. Um, So you come into for $5 it right could, now. It rustles your Kurt. If you wanted it rustles to. your Kurt. It certainly does. There you it's, go. it's streaming on YouTube and Amazon for $5. Mm. Well, well you so. could just wait. <laughs> I'll wait. Five bucks. Five bucks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll spend five bucks. I spend five bucks on a Fandle bet and lose three of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might as well it's... rent it. Um, guys, have you ever seen any of the uh, Kenneth Branagh Agatha Christie movies? Uh, Death on the Nile. 
uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Wait, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I, I know what you're talking like... about. Perot. Hercule Poirot. So with yeah. Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh directing and playing Hercule Poirot in these movies. I don't even know how you pronounce the fucking name. Okay. So he's done two He's been, done two of them. They've both done very well. He's created his own little cinematic universe, Andrew, which I know you love. The latest one is Not coming out this week. It's called The Haunting in Venice, also based on an Agatha Christie oh, novel. And that is okay. a uh, Kenneth Branagh Hercule Poirot uh seance halloween movie type thing the haunting in it penis. looks pretty interesting a haunting in venice it's called <laughs> a haunting in penis i kind of want to check it out i'm not going to lie i'm not going to see it in theaters but when it comes to streaming i will certainly check it out i don't think i've ever seen any of those so it, it, it from what i've seen this one seems like kind of like a trapped room haunted seance murder mystery type thing which i'm kind of all in on and the reviews have been pretty good so far Would so say, uh, i and, and with the, and with the caveat 13 or uh it's pg-13 tease for later i also have not seen uh the uh death in the nile or murder on the orange express either have you guys seen any of you guys seen this i kind of want to check him out johnny depp one like recently johnny depp was in a murder on the orange okay. express before he got canceled there hasn't there been like five of, of those other, other movies no there's been no. there's been two oh, there's been two, two. that has like a huge cast yeah that one was really that big. was like knives out it was like this big yeah I have I honestly that. like yeah. Knives in, out is great. in the same vein as knives out yeah. like that type of thing like murder mystery so sherlock holmes you fuck Oh, I mean, I mean Sherlock Holmes, like, no. <laughs> it's not Sherlock Holmes, like, original Sherlock Like the, Robert <laughs> like the show? Movie? No, like, no, no, the show from, like, the 80s. Oh, with, with Cumberbatch and, and Martin Freeman? Oh, so good. Oh, those are good, too. No, that's a newer one. He's talking about the I'm old, talking about, like, which the one old talking ones about? that are, like, from, like, the mid-80s to early 90s ones. Oh. They're really good. Guy was definitely, like, a real-life, like, opium addict in film. Like, like, the guy acting, doing mm-hmm. it. I was like, this guy's fucked up. It made for a great Sherlock Holmes, though. The new, the new Sherlock with Cumberbatch. Oh, those are phenomenal. Yeah, so good. Cumberbatch. Oh, yeah. And he's so good. And he's such a goofball. Yeah, I mean, his name's Benedict Cumberbatch. Well, exactly. What a name, by the way. I mean, I feel like you can't, you, you can't not be an actor if your name is Benedict Cumberbatch. Well, let's just put it this way. If that was a football player's name, my team name for fantasy would be Eggs. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> I mean, it could so, still be they, Eggs Benedict Cumberbatch. Regardless, you could. It's a, it's a weird name. It'd kind of be funny. It doesn't matter. It must be relevant. It doesn't matter. Nobody teams. else would get it except for us. I, I have the most fucked up. Speaking, team speaking of which, <laughs> actually, I feel like this is something we should talk about. Is the fact that we're all now the four of us are all in one fantasy football league together. Yes. I think we're all, you know, uh, doing that whole thing. That's Sunday true. So and that's fitting that we're doing a draft tonight mm. in honor of Finn. No, yeah, we'll get. Actually, you know what? Why don't we? Actually, you know what? That's a great point. Why don't we put a pin in that and we'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, local news, by the way. So if you're local into news. local New England haunted attractions, as we are on this show, Factory of Terror in Fall River. Any of you guys ever been there before? I've been to no, Fall River. I haven't either. Is, hey, factory of Terror. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. wait, I don't think you need to go I, to the haunted house to experience that. I, we went, no. We so went you and I have things. never been. Um, I've always wanted to hit up Factory of Terror. Uh, their their original location is in Fall River. They have another one, I believe, out in Western Mass. They are the earliest opening haunted attraction in New England. It's open this weekend, opening on September 15th. And their tickets for opening weekend are $16.66. Ooh, so does it just like just walk down see the street and see what happens? No, it's <laughs> no, don't, don't, be, mean. don't be mean. Don't be mean. I've been around for a while. and like I, I've No, I've driven three. by. It, it looks it's like a huge thing yeah yeah it's like a warehouse you i believe it's it fucking massive I, it's one it's, it's one i've always wanted to check out well, we never close. have so. i mean that's like Paris. like it's close as easy you know what but it's still uh, definitely close than far river that's oh, far river as far that's as 45 far. minutes that's 45 minutes okay, away but then you just plan i mean it's not like haunted overload is like three hours north i mean 45 minutes doesn't sound haunted overload bad. is a different different it's a what different I mean. kettle of That's fish, what I'm as they say. These are very yeah. specific yeah. niche places. Yeah, I could say. Well, anyway, <laughs> and um, it's closer compared to some others. If you're listening and you're interested in haunted attractions, know that uh, Factory of Terror is going to be open this weekend. So if you're listening to this episode, it'll be open tomorrow, mm-hmm. Friday, September 15th. Tomorrow. And in addition to that, there'll be more on this in the coming weeks. Barrett's Haunted Mansion and Spooky World will both be opening a week from this coming Friday, which will be Friday, September 22nd. And I can say that we'll be attending Barrett's Haunted Mansion on opening night, which is Friday, September 2nd. And uh, 
20 second. What did I say? Second. Second. 20 second. And uh, some of us will be attending Spooky World the following night on September 23rd. Dude, we went to Fright Kingdom. That was so much further than 45 minutes, right? Well, yeah, we were saying Barrett's New Hampshire wasn't for 45 no, minutes. Yeah, away. Barrett's is no, not. I'm saying Barrett's factory, isn't further away than Fall, than Fall River. Yeah, I know. We were saying Barrett's is closer than Factory of Terror. Yeah, that's what. That's all we. Were that's saying. all we were saying. Oh. Moving on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hey, haunted attractions are opening locally, which is fantastic news for all of us. So, hey, that's what I got for news. Anyone else got anything newsworthy? Cool. Why don't we pay some bills real quick before we get into watch list stuff? We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> uh, Mike, I just got to tell you, the uh, phone company called. You didn't pay bills. Still bill. haven't paid those bills, though. <laughs> so when you go and pay the bills, will you just pay the bills? You overrise a lot of money. The phone company, like, what is this joke from 1930? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, the phone company called. They said they, raise, uh, they haven't received money on their end. Uh, bell, bell, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Your horse didn't drop off its cash. Good, good stuff, guys. <laughs> good stuff. Good jokes. Very, very good. Real funny. <laughs> Anyone want to lead off, uh, oh, tee what's off it, what's it first here? with Standard, our uh, watch list stuff? Matthew, why Matthew. don't you go ahead? I have nothing, so everybody else go ahead of me. I got nothing. I got, actually, I have one thing. I, I got two I got two fresh watches. Um, one of them is a, a brand new movie from this year called Cobweb. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about this. I was interested. This movie was great. Yeah. Um, I liked it a lot. It's Lizzie Kaplan, and... Um, she does a great job. So, uh, hold on, let me look up the guy's name. It's a the one of the actors from The Boys. Um, do you Carl guys know Urban? No, Anthony. I have been told oh, to watch Anthony Star. Anthony Star. Never yes. watched. It. Both of them do great. They play. Uh, they yeah. play fucking horrible parents. So, what it's about is this little boy who is at school and he uh, is hearing noises in his wall, and he's kind of acting out in school. He's getting bullied, but he's also like doing things back. And the parents, who are Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr, are very like, nope, we'll just take him right in and we'll homeschool him and we'll call it a day because fuck off, he's not being in the outside world. That's fine. He's grounded. We're putting him in the basement for a week. Yeah. So interesting decision. I'm not going to spoil this movie because it is 100% worth watching. Uh, It's got some, there's a nightmare sequence in it that is top tier jump scare material. And it ends up being a pretty good movie. It fucking ends up getting pretty gory. It's pretty wild, a little gross and creepy. Um, this is definitely a movie I think that Cat would really like. It's right up her alley in terms of like loving all the uh, Conjuring, Insidious movies, stuff yes. like that. Yeah. So Cobweb is one you should look at. Um, I I rented it uh, for like five bucks. I mean, that's kind of steep, it's though. brand new. It just came out. It's so it's a 2023 new. movie. So it's definitely worth keeping on your radar because this is this is as of right now, it's it's gonna take off hit my top ten. Did it just so, go to stream? Whoa. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, well, I got I feel like this has been tough this year figuring out like I mean there's a couple Yeah, no, this is it's is good like, and it's like it's it's because there's been so many different kinds of movies that have come out this year. This one is unique enough to kind of place itself it's worth watching definitely i think it's one of the better movies that have come out uh, oh, this year so far. okay all right um it borrows a little from some other movies but it is fucking creepy as hell cool um there's some good reveal to it keeps you waiting for some good reveals towards the end the other one i watched was a movie that came out i i read that it came out in 2017 but it, the imdb says 2015 this movie called the devil's candy um, but it's one of those things that like premiered at festivals in 2015. I, I think like, so. Sure, yeah. that that like, um, yeah. This is um, the director did the movie. Fuck, I'll think about it. But um, the movie, the, the loved ones. I think it's like this girl like fucking captures this guy to be her prom date. But anyway, the Devil's Candy was very good. This was a fucking metal, literally a metal heavy metal movie. Okay. Um, there's a lot of heavy metal in it. There's a lot like of fans. Just music. Music. Um, like throughout the movie. Yeah. Gotcha. So what it's about is this family of three. They have a teenage daughter. They buy a big, huge house in Texas for kind of a small amount of money because an elderly couple died in it before. Okay. And the husband is a painter, and he is doing, like, commission paintings for, like, one of the ones he's working on is for, like, a bank and, like, different museums, this, that, the other thing. Um, murals and stuff like that for towns whatever and so he's getting caught up in this new painting he's doing since they moved in 
and all he, this huge thing is of him depicting children that are being killed by this guy that's going around killing and kidnapping and killing children. And um, I thought when you first said painter, I thought you meant like painting walls. No, no, no. Like he's like an actual, artist. An yeah. artist. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, what? And <laughs> so, but that guy that's killing them keeps going to all these places and just like playing his guitar, like a heavy metal guitar, like super fucking loud, like a. It's so that's why it's 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 interesting, but it goes into it turns into a home invasion film, big time, and it gets fucking nuts. So uh, what's it called again? The Devil's Candy. What's it on? Uh, I watched this on Tubi. Okay. Yeah. Just no, like everything I'm else. Tubi has this? fucking yeah. everything. Tubi? It's probably on Not other streaming Tubi. services too if you feel like looking for it so you don't have to watch the commercials, but it is 100% on Tubi. I think it's my um, It is a brutal movie. Um, it deals with anytime there's kids and uh, why, trouble is rough. Why do you do the kids? Sarah asked movies. me the same thing. She said, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, I'm like, dude, it's fine. It's a you? movie. Dude. God, here's, here's the deal is that we are now just noticing how much we're exposed to this type of horror as opposed to before when yeah. it was always around. Because I, I, now... That's, I took a break a from kid. horror when it's I had Layla. always had a lot of the same things. When Layla was born, like I didn't e, I didn't watch e. horror Most for like Most of like super new. Yeah, like, the, let's the, talk about the Rosemary's Baby. things happening to children has been in horror for a very long time. It's not anything that's very new, so it's like, yeah. Now well, we're just now we're so just horrifying. Say, our senses are more. And it, hey, honestly, it. it's it's not like overly violent. No, it, it, there's a lot of cutaway. I so I, it, it spares you. But. I will say certain things. Example that just popped in my head first: the girl in Hereditary that gets her decapitated, decapitated yep. in the car. I saw Hereditary way before I had Bridget. Still thought it was horrendous but mm-hmm. like a new level now of like anxiety now having a kid dude i, See, I feel like that, totally that situation is so ridiculous it doesn't bother is me as though? much as other things Layla honestly was... you know what you know what you know what bothered me more than anything else was watching oh under the skin that yeah that, 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 that was, was honestly the most like the that was very real the speak, first speak the first no thing evil. in a long time that i had to like Speak No Evil, Speak no evil fucked me up. Fucked up. I haven't yep. watched that movie again since yeah. I watched it, and I have yeah. to watch it because I that's do, a, That's uh, another one, but yeah. Under the Skin, that seemed really that. like... Because that, that could happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, then. You, you mean, go yeah. in after, you try and save your dog. All of a sudden, the husband's going. Oh, I think all of a sudden, like, the mom's like, going. Like, all of a sudden, now you have a... Now you have a... That was like, I needed to like pause and walk away. Yeah. Dude, I'm fucked. Like, that scene of Hereditary, when that happened, I was like, fucking thank God. I was more at thought. So I've seen Hereditary multiple times. Well, dude, have you ever seen the movie Antichrist? With Willem Dafoe? Yeah. By Lars we, talked, uh, we talked about that yeah. last week. They're falling yeah. out the fucking windows the uh, first scene of the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's and different. you see him hit the ground that's, and everything. That's dude. a yeah. lot yeah. different. But that's Lars von Trier. That's the kind of movies he makes. Well, well here's the thing. Here's so. the thing, though. Like, horror is subjective. You mm-hmm. find different things horrifying at different parts right. of your life, right? So, I personally, as you yeah. progress through life, certain things become more ho- horrifying than they ever were in your yeah. life previously. And I've definitely been feeling that myself lately, as I'm sure Kat has. And it's just, it's a different level of, like, looking at stuff. It's weird. It's, I don't know how to describe it. You can't figure it out until you are in the position. I saw one recently. I can't remember the name it was, but at the very end, the guy ran out of cereal. It was probably the most horrifying (laughs) thing to me. Because that's like, yeah. that's my, big, a, my biggest horror is such a cereal. I will tell you, there is a cereal shortage right now. Say, what I mean, I'm not going to like count chocolate. A cereal, cereal shortage? A cereal shortage, yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. 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 Sure. But those, Sorry. those are my two okay. watches that yes. I have. Yes. 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 Okay. Moving on. Yes, Max. Yep. Uh, Catherine, anything to report? We have this one thing we can talk about together if you want. What we do in the shadows? That's correct. That's together? Oh, you guys finish it? Yes. yes. Awesome. Yes. I am yes. still plugging away. It just. We so, won't be able to It's good. Okay. It's great. It's very, very funny. I don't want to. I don't want to. I thought in terms of the plot. They kind of bitched out because where they were headed with everything they were saying the entire season, it was leading towards one thing, and they didn't follow but I feel through like they didn't with get, that one. I think you're thing. get rid of him. They don't want to get rid of him. I think you're I understand that like you want to keep you want to keep all be, the characters no. around, but like. You're, 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 he has no, you're, no you're, idea. You're, you're he has no idea. I know we can't, How no, no. I feel like we're already given, I've watched yeah. the first three. I feel like we've oh, already, watching. Oh, yeah, we've already said, we've already said too much, but I, I feel like, 
That's what I said. I feel like they, okay, so my, okay, okay, my fault. Hopefully he doesn't do shit. Hopefully he doesn't remember this when he watches the book. I'm the solid. Yeah, stop <laughs> but yeah, I feel like they kind of do that a lot. Yeah. Skip this episode. Plot plot reasons. I feel like they bitched out a little bit, but it was still fucking the funniest goddamn show on television. I, I said to Matt a couple weeks ago. I yeah, stop nitpicking. I'm not ready to go there quite yet. I can't. I, I can't within the fiber of my being go there yet. I simply, I'm telling you that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't call it better than it's always sunny in Philadelphia. No, no, but it's no, not, it's, it's not, not, it's, it's it's not the same, close. it's not it's the same type getting of thing, but it's close. better than The Office. The Office sucks. Oh, I like The Office. No, the, I think The Office is good. The Office, but I, I think, think is the most is better than The Office. Of this time. is not even close to always sunny. I like Parks and it, That's different. That's like a whole different level of comedy. This is more subtle satire. It's funnier. It's you have to, you have to be satire, but it's very Sunny's boring. You, I, think, satire. I think you have yeah. to be a horror fan oh, to, enjoy to understand and like to fully appreciate, appreciate the humor. Yeah. Not understand, but appreciate the humor. That's right. True. You yeah. don't pick up all the Babadook at a party, like if you're not a horror so fan. So I would say like yeah. all of the things they brought back in the season finale, all the horror shit that like all the horror characters they brought back, I was like, whoa. This is fucking all right. This but is you enjoy it more ingenious. as a horror I just forgot how many people golf were like in it in the earlier seasons. Like, wait till you keep going. Yeah. Oh, I have to rewatch them because I've only seen them once. That's I what I'm saying. Like, I and I like didn't. Yeah, really, I wasn't like, paying too yeah, much attention. So to now it. that I'm watching so it, I like, should watch it I'm like, this show is very fucking. The, bi- the biggest yeah. thing that I realized about this season was like as it continued on, there were just more and more. <laughs> random guest stars they were bringing on that i was just like it's Whoa. great well they're all friends and they're you're like and, yeah. and I, I just thought to myself the whole time this person has to be a fan of this show oh, so many people you know else did, there was one person specifically that ended up on there and i was like how the fuck did they get this guy even For before an entire episode um, earlier it seasons. makes perfect sense though in the earlier you, seasons, i think you know exactly what i'm know, talking about i don't want to spoil it for matt so many uh, people yes yeah, don't spoil it yet. yeah yeah so many people have worked in the same networks before. No, him, him though too. That's, I know a, what you're saying. that's a bigger one than him. Um, He's better. Okay, can we uh, start? Yeah, all right, all right. We, 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 we've we've, we've gone too far. Gone too far. So basically, uh, we've talked about what we do in the shadows again. That was Lots pretty much. I think all of me and Cat have watched spoilers. this. Yes. Week. No, we didn't spoil too much. It's okay. okay. So yeah, uh, what we do in the shadows is fucking great. The most recent season is awesome. And Matt, I know you're going to keep going. Keep going for sure. Well, you guys have seen Flight of the Concords, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. So that's I why. Love like, I love. I love that they took the weird looking blonde chick in the front in Flight yes. of the Concords and turned her into the exact same personer in this show. Yeah. Personer. Mm-hmm. Person. Personer. Person. So what is a thing. personer? So uh, it's same character. I, listening back to last week, I laughed a lot at some of the things that you you. Uh, tried to say and then messed up and you're like immediately caught your, yourself that nobody else would have caught immediately after what, no, was you can one, tell when people there was one specific thing that you said i was like <laughs> oh my god what did you say i forget now i can't remember but okay. anyway what did you watch for horror movies my friend i have a long list okay oh, but i'm not gonna get Keep into short. most of them because most of them are in uh preparation so i don't even know if i should mention them because if people are gonna don't, draft them, don't. No, no. mention the one right, so the one movie i that is does not involve any of these things uh, i watched the taking of uh deb oh yeah, 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 yeah. talked about that i thought that was good i enjoyed it that's i thought it was are? very injured inter- no that would yeah that's the one i'm talking about because ah. it doesn't involve the list i didn't think it, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think it was i was surprised I that's don't, definitely I, that's right I don't have it on my list. dude that movie's fucked i don't there's like so many that scenes movie. in that movie that i'm like yeah. Ugh, uncomfortable the, uh, but i didn't like a lot yeah that's not but there's yeah. also like yeah, no. like yeah. five other scenes that i'm like a fuck that scene makes up for the fact that you know exactly what's happening the whole time Oh, because you don't know that that's gonna happen. But the people that are there don't know, and it's such yeah, a nice yeah, shoot because that's a very, me. but that's also a very gutsy move to turn Alzheimer's and like into like it's a little much, evil. It's a little mm-hmm. aggressive. I don't think so. I think it's actually a nice twist on it. Oh no, I think it's a great twist, but it's kind of fucked up. Yeah, yeah it's it's it's, it's like it's, you're, you're uh, making you light it? of Alzheimer's. It's, it's, yeah. it's exploitive. Yeah, yeah they're um, exploiting Alzheimer's, and it's Alzheimer's is a lot like that. Which is okay, but, yeah. But so you would have no fucking clue that this is going on. I mean, I think you would have figured it out at some point or been like something weird yeah, is going she's on. Always she's wandering around the she's woods, nailing like, the windows down. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's a sign that you should probably get the fuck out of here. Right. Um, also, the daughter, Sarah, I she looks so familiar and then I realized she was in a league of their own. She was one of the ball players. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and nice if you, now you immediately know. I was like, I know who this you is. Fucking her, she player. had like that, like, she it looks like she's wearing a mask. Like her eyes are shut. Her mouth's drooped down. 
Yeah, people get old. Yeah. But she's not even that old. Hot take. This is a weird face. Might be the second best movie about exorcism. That is awesome. I have to really look at that. <laughs> it's you're not it's, it's I'm gonna, a pretty I think fucking I, good there's movie, a chance I present the second best movie. It also it also draft. it also um I know the movie you're talking about, about and I don't know that I agree. We can talk okay. about this. Okay. I think I know the movie exactly. I, I am okay. willing to bet that we have all very there's different drafts. So <laughs> none of us have to worry about <laughs> true, true. <laughs> oh so those are all PG thirteen too, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Boo. All right, what else do you watch before we keep going? Um, other than the ones we're going to talk about later, because I won't mention them, I guess. Yes. Okay. All right. Fine. Because then it affects my draft. Why don't we just... Um, no point in talking about them twice. Why don't so, we yeah. just... I'm barely going to talk about it. Hey, anyway, why so. don't we just cut the shit right now, and why don't we uh, take a break, and we'll come back in 90 seconds with a little bit about our draft. What well, you guys draft order, about? too. Draft order. Yeah. I have, I have Coming up. Big D's. All right, we're good. See you in 90 seconds. It's official. The critics' decision is in. Spooky World is spectacular. Enter the new black hole. If you dare. Or the new horror house of wax. This year, don't miss the real Jason, Bobby Pickett, or Alice Cooper. Phone the 24-hour Spooky World hotline. 508-838-0200. That's 508-838-0200. Spooky World is just west of Boston. And haunts every night from October 1st till November 1st. If you had the nerve, you'd phone 508-838-0200. It's America's horror theme park. Don't be scared. I'm the super sweet monster with the super sweet new cereal, Count Chocula. Bethel, here's the super sweet new cereal, Frankenberry. But I've got chocolate sweeties for monstrous chocolate flavor. Well, I've got berry flavored sweeties for monstrous strawberry flavor. Count Chocula. Frankenberry. Hi. Ah. <laughs> Frankenberry. Count Chocula. And we're back. Thank you, Andrew, for <laughs> lending me that finger that I so desperately the needed. Maestro. Oh, don't you jerk. The maestro over here. Guys, so uh, typically, you know, each week you might hear a movie from us. Sometimes we do some different fun things. This is one of my favorite fucking things to do. And it's a draft because it uh, gives us an opportunity to talk about a lot of different movies, a lot of different topics. And I think this is going to be a fun one tonight. So yeah, if you listen to our show, you know we love us some drafts, baby. But if you haven't, basically what we're doing here, if you do fantasy football, guess what? It's very similar to what you do there. We're doing a snake-style draft where it's all four of us. So it starts one, two, three, four, goes four, three, two, one, and so on and so forth. And tonight, it's going to be non-R-rated horror, which is... Wait, I thought you said it was PG-13. Non R rated so PG oh, or PG thirteen is the same thing. You're fine. Oh, <clears throat> which is Breathe. again, this is surprising to Gateway me. Gateway horror. Granted that the person to pick the topic for tonight was Andrew, and not me, not Cat. Um, I actually think I she threw out the, I threw out the group chat. Before. I said, no, I did not. <laughs> erroneous, said, erroneous. Uh, Andrew, did Cat steal your phone? Have you been held hostage? But this is an Andrew pick tonight. So I'm actually very excited to hear why you wanted to do this. So talk to us about that. Um, I mean, basically, I'm just spitballing draft ideas in my head, like, all the time. So I'm just like, when it, one comes up, I'm like, oh, yeah. I just start texting it like Dan Flashers. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> this was a good one. Well, I it, thought it was good because yeah. I throw a billion it, out it there. And, you know, like, every, like, but one I, out of six is like, hey, yeah, let's I'm like, I know of at least two other draft ideas that you suggested that the I have written down. Were, I think would be fun. Well, yeah, don't reveal them now, but I'm surprised you didn't pick uh, one of those other ones. So what, like, why did you just like you like the rock? Because I feel it was like, the first one you so popped in your I head. I literally like, feel like this is a perfect way to start the Halloween season is, we have to remember that we want to keep horror movies going on, so we need to get the younger audience involved and enjoying them. So why not talk about movies that they could enjoy and you could watch with your kids not necessarily that you should watch them with your kids, because I'm not saying that yeah. these movies aren't fucked up and bizarre, 
but technically, he can. according to PG the NCAA, 13, not a big deal. They can hit. The difference, hit. the difference is though, is that if you're watching this with like a ten year old, then you got to start worrying about fucking up their head. Like, keep it to the rating. I mean, I was watching R rated movies when I was like thirteen. Yeah, nine, so. ten. Oh, like, absolutely. And especially okay. nowadays, I feel like kids nowadays these will be a walk in the park. Oh yeah. Well, I agree with you because so, like this like- happened to me last week. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the time on this show, we talk about some pretty hardcore horror related topics, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't, sometimes a little bit more lighthearted. And I feel like tonight might be one of those things, despite some of the other conversations that we've already had. We'll see. We'll see. But I mean, whatever movies we pick, say what you will about them. I think gateway horror, again, is a very important thing because without that, probably doubtful that most of us would be the horror fans that we are today without these sorts of movies that we're probably going to pick like yes. people like movies that people might see that'd be like wow this is pretty scary pretty awesome i want more of that let's go a little bit crazier so i think that's an important thing to talk about and i'm glad that andrew brought it up so thanks dad i don't know how to respond to that <laughs> except to say <laughs> without further ado change my diapers <laughs> why don't we just do some drafting i'm not changing any more diapers I than I already have to. but thank you don't <laughs> tell surprised. me about that you guys want to hear the draft order i do the first overall pick wait did someone witness this so you didn't cheat i picked it no he i guess if no. i'm number one he cheated first pick is matt i see followed by always. at it's number nice. two cat Followed by Andrew, followed by Mike. That's so nice. I like being last, though. It's nice being last. It's nice being last, but I have a feeling that a couple of the movies that I have on my list might go first. But I'm interested to hear what Matt has to say, because I know Matt has kind of been a... Correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. You've kind of been a notorious hater on PG-13 horror for a long time. So I'm I'm very interested. I'm a big hater on PG-13. I I think every movie just should be fucking rated R. There should just be kids' movies and then adult movies. Yeah. I feel like the reason I remember this is because specifically when we (laughs) saw and reviewed The Black Phone, I think I remember you saying that The Black Phone felt like PG-13 Blumhouse bullshit. It was. was. That is the best way to describe this fucking movie. That is rated R, by the way. It's not rated PG-13. It didn't need to be rated R. No, it didn't need to be. But It was rated R because they said fuck at times. Yes. And now you think you're like, so that movie could be rated PG-13 if, but maybe not because there's a lot of kids involved in it too. Mm. Might be a little dicey to put a PG-13 we'll rating right. on there. I don't well, know. Anyway, you're, you're Matt, asking the wrong guy. Matt, uh, <laughs> Matt has the first pick in this draft, so I will be very interested to hear what he picks first based on his opinion of PG-13. <sighs> what I was trying to say. All right, so this is PG-13 and PG. Oh, sorry, non R rated horror is what the t- the technical title is. So it could put, could be anything, because don't forget the PG thirteen rating system didn't exist until the mid eighties. So I'm gonna go with what I personally think is the scariest movie to not be rated R. Uh, I'm gonna go with The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Okay, this is 2005 close, yeah. by Scott Derrickson, uh, who did The Black Phone and who did uh, Sinister. Yep, and um, a handful of other fucking yep movies that he sure did. Been yeah, he did uh, <laughs> Doctor Doctor Strange. Ooh, Sinister couldn't be. Sinister was scary. That's Sinister not PG yeah, That's a hard. Sinister is R. That's that's a hard R. That's, movie. No, that's, that's, yeah. that's a very hard R. Yeah, uh, the lawnmower scene alone, I think yeah. that can't be. That's PG-13. a scary movie. That's a really you know scary. what? But that he proved himself. He's like, oh, you want to fucking see a hard fucking movie? I'll make one. Yeah, Exorcism of Emily Rose was. To me, when you were saying that, uh, what did you say? It was like taking the, of Deborah Logan. Yeah, no. This, yeah. Is, if there's anything that comes mm-hmm. close to the original Exorcist for Exorcism movie, it's this. This one's close, I think. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It's I don't think it's as good as taking of Deborah Logan. Oh, it's really? it's, it's actually scarier. So I will say, I saw this. What year did this come out? Two thousand five. Two thousand five. So, as we all know, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. So it's a very religious group. Craig, who's one of my best friends, he had just gotten to this point where he had just left the religion and he watched this movie. He was so fucking scared out of his mind. Like, this movie fucked with his head. I was like, Jesus Christ, I've never seen yeah. someone so scared at a PG-13 movie. And I was like, I get it based off of your... But, like, if you... Yeah, it's a pretty scary movie if you have, like, ties like that. The so. thing that this movie does is it takes all of the unrealistic parts out of The Exorcist and it just goes with mm-hmm. things that are humanly still possible like the weird contorted like you can still do that shit and yeah. but yeah. the other thing too was that i guess jennifer 
What's your name? Off the top of my head, it's not Jennifer Connelly. Um, no. The, girl the main character from Dexter. Yeah. The girl from Dexter. We'll call her that. <laughs> Yeah, well, she's she's a sister, Jennifer right? Carpenter. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Carpenter. Oh, okay. so um, I guess they were saying that the noises she was making were they didn't have to use like sound editing. That's fine. she that's was making same. those sounds, and that's why they were kind of like we had to like kind of pull back and be like, "What the fuck is going on? Like, do we need like there? There's a lot of people that were outwardly spoken about being very uncomfortable filming." a lot of the exorcism scenes because she was going so fucking hard, which I think that's pretty fucking that's cool. Wild. Maybe she's just a good actor. Uh, I don't know. She but, was crazy in Dexter. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's in, she was in quarantine actress. too, yeah. but she, this movie was fucking legit, dude. Like this was for a PG 13 horror movie. This is one of the scariest. In my scary. opinion. This made exorcism. It took the exorcist brought it down to like a level of being like oh okay fuck this could just happen like the exorcist is fucked up and it's scary but there's so much shit in it like no one's fucking levitating the scene on the bus like, in the exorcist in Marilyn rose really fucked with me where she just like turns around and they all have those fucking weird like demon faces yeah. well that there's like the fucking, psycho yeah. wave that was yeah. that was yeah. creepy yeah. for sure so and i i get the like the exorcist is kind of like the epic yeah movie. and it was so scary point. because it was so it, yeah. of its time this was that movie for everyone that like was like sure we're catholic but like that's fucking come on. doesn't i'm saying one of the yeah. only things like work working against exorcisms the uh, the exorcists favor the prologue in iraq a little bit like it gives some backstory but i'm like uh like kind of takes me out a little really bit. I, not, I don't yeah. mind that part i think it shows it that he has a predestined shows journey to have a battle with this demon that's what that's if, I, you I'm should read the book there. because the book will I, make that much more cool and it's on my dr list. jones it's not a big but book I like never talk but i <laughs> all right so, that's so that means uh that's a strong emily one. Rose that's like a jamar one one oh <laughs> one wow great pick matthew means we're going to cat for two and i have a feeling that i know what she's gonna pick you know what i think you know what i'm gonna pick but I don't think anyone knows what I'm going to pick. Pocus Pocus. No. <laughs> um, Go ahead. Everyone, everyone give a guess. Um, what insidious. No. No. Legend. No. No. Uh, the Grudge. Yes. <laughs> no. Or the Ring. Yeah, sure. No. Or the I'm, Ring. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, well, I know. I would normally take the Ring here, but I'm trying to go a little bit outside the box. Because I feel like I just talk the same things all the time. I feel like the Ring's scarier than the Grudge, though, I have to Me say. Too. Like, yes. By the way. The Ring's but absolutely no, horrifying. But, but no, because in the Grudge, I forever, so wherever we lived, when we lived across the street in the, in the condo, when we live in this house right now, we always had a room with a little cutout for the attic. Like, we don't have, like, a whole attic here, and, like, we didn't have a whole attic there. We had a little square where you can go up in the attic. Yeah, we still have a cutout for the, the attic here. the same place. Yes, we still have a cutout for the attic here in Here, closet. we're, we're yes. recording, yes. And the, you know, the, little, boy, in there, though, the right? little boy from the ring lives up there because all I ever think about the is the little boy from the, sorry, not the ring, the grudge, is him going, like, nah. Like on the stairs, or whatever. Like, or yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, and like that has forever sat with me too. That's yes, quite creepy as fuck. So I, do, creepy. I do ever watch the original Japanese version. No, I have should, to. I know because it is very good. And so, so you are picking it's again the yes. Sarah Michelle Geller. Oh yeah, because the, the, the other ones are the other ones are hard. No, yeah, those no, are no. Hard yes, hard the hard Sarah hard. Michelle Geller one. Wow. Okay. All right. That's so my... you're picking the Grudge over the Ring. Surprised Fair by enough. that. I'm very, very surprised. surprised. It's a good pick. That's okay. Okay. That's oh, I'd love to pick. hear what you think of the original one. Well, that and like, and then you see the girl and she's walking up the stairs and half of her jaw is like hanging down and she's like flopping. Like there was so much in that movie that was terrifying you that I'm watch like the original one. Okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> one. Honestly, yeah. I think I think J JR is pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah. Always freaks the fuck out. So yes, that, that movie always Pulse, sat with me Pulse, you know, like, since I ever saw it. We were talking about that the other day. Because I was like, is Pulse rated R and you, I think yeah, yeah, that is because really nice. I, yeah. I actually looked that up yeah. for this. It's, it's right. And then they, yeah. I bet you, I wonder what the remake was. The American PG version, thirteen, thirteen. It's on yeah. there. Same with couldn't, mirrors. Couldn't, same with one of the calls. Same with couldn't the do ring. It. Yeah, yeah. They just couldn't them. do it. <sighs> couldn't do it. All right, the Grudge off the board. Andrew, you're up next. So I'm drafting ADP in this situation because I have a feeling you may take one of them. 
Okay. Although it's highly unlikely and it's a reach in the first round. Get out. But I'm going with the Mothman. Oh, you mother. Oh, oh, that was on my list. (laughs) Oh, you're such an asshole. That was on my list. It's like you, it's like you like took Calvin Ridley in the fucking first round because you knew I wanted him in the second. You, you're so. Well, I have to wait. You have two picks coming up. Right. And that movie's fantastic. This is draft. Wow. This might be Richard Gere's best movie. I mean, probably not, but I fucking love this movie. It's just done so well. It's like a, um, what was I trying to compare it to? What was I going to say it was? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. I forgot already. But, cool. dude, it's I love cryptids shit. Me too. So you get the Mothman, and then they bring in Indrid Colt, who has nothing to do with the Mothman. Mm, he does. Though. Barely, though. Well, depends on your knowledge of the Mothman story. Continue. I'll get back to Well, that. this is in what, like Virginia? Correct. Yeah, Virginia. Uh, Point Virginia. Pleasant. Point Virginia. Pleasant. And yes. the... Um, the Mothman did predict that that bridge was going to collapse, or is that false? So, based on the story that was told, so this movie is very loosely based on a 1975 novel by a guy named John Keel, who wrote a lot of like paranormal, weird stuff in the 60s and 70s. Okay. So, he wrote in his book that he was actually contacted by the Mothman and was told ahead of time about the collapse of the Silver Bridge. In Point Pleasant, Virginia. Now, obviously, that's debated, but it happened. He wrote about it. Take with that what you will. Well, there you go. The Mothman, I think, is probably the most fascinating of the cryptid. And again, this makes could be a vampire in a later thing or an alien because we've talked a lot about cryptids recently Andrew. without pulling a trigger on a draft. <laughs> um, the Mothman incident <laughs> situation, whatever you want to call it, might be the most interesting and scary and creepy cryptid situation that's ever been recorded on history because it's so fucking weird. It's so creepy. <laughs> well, Indrid Cole, know, was, Indrid Cole was the smiling man, basically. He had a huge smile on his face well, all the time. So the right? connection between Mothman and Indrid Cole was basically the fact that when all this Mothman stuff was happening, there was all kinds of UFO activity that happened in Virginia at the same time without going too long. He could be an alien. The injured cold incident happened at the same time as the Mothman incidents. Maybe he's a shape shifting within mile within miles. So I was anyway. just gonna say, is a shape shifter? No, cryptids are not. There are some sort of fucking is a demon. demon? Yeah. There are some okay. demon. No fuck. Could, could be could be a lot of things. Hmm. Um, I mean, yeah. they also say that Sasquatch could be like a fifth dimensional being. So there's or fourth dimensional, some dimension. Well, anyway. Being. So the Mothman, the Mothman here. prophecy book is really interesting and it's way different from the mothman prophecy movie and andrew you're an absolute asshole for picking that well that's so I, the reason i picked this in this draft is my dad when i was like that movie came out with like 2001 or 90 it was a long time ago yeah but my dad recommended it to me so i was like oh it's a jeff pick sure i'll go with it and it yeah and he would have liked it better if kevin costner was richard Gere's character because okay but fantastic movie i love that movie um, specifically the reason I thought of this as the scariest, one of the scariest, like non R horror movies is for one particular scene where Richard Gere is in a hotel and oh, he gets a call from yeah. somebody on the phone. And basically this person on the phone is predicting his future, telling him like, That's I can, I can, I can yeah. see you like, Hey, you're, what am I holding chapstick? What, what line am I reading on this book here? And he reads the exact line. It's very, very and they did it very so creepy. well. Like yeah. th- that whole movie is very dark and bleak. They do a very good job of just keeping that movie, yeah, unsettling. And as a PG thirteen movie, it's perfect. Is it horror? It's more of a thr- thriller, but it's it's horror. psychological thriller, yeah. I'd say. But it's a very scary psychological thriller. Yeah, they do a I very good say. job making. So it that scary. again, that would have been picked by me. But it so also is smart. This, it isn't you. the scariest PG thirteen movie. It's your favorite. So right. That that was yeah. the scariest part for me though was the whole phone scene. That scene was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cold. Yep. All right. So I guess I'm forced to go here in a different direction, and I'm just gonna pick what I thought Cat would have picked by now. And I'm sorry, Insidious is a fucking scary mm-hmm. movie. That's a scary PG-13 movie, no doubt about it. Um, say what you will about the sequels, but the fact that this was James Wan at the beginning of his career, scary fucking movie. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget ever the first time I watched this movie. It was uh, me and Kat, and we were watching it at my apartment in Quincy, and we were both like sitting with our backs leaned up against a wall in my bedroom on my bed, and there was a window open right behind us. And oh yeah, that and like so he he had this he had a small room in Quincy. He yeah, lived yeah, with yeah. two other guys. Mm-hmm. So it was three of them. 
And like, so he just had this little room. If we weren't in like the common area, if there were other people who wanted to sit and watch a movie, we were sitting on his bed and like, it was just this, like, it's just us, the darkness and like, whatever is going Open on outside. Yeah. yeah. And like, all of a sudden at the end, you see the guy like behind, I was like, yeah. oh my God. Like I, yeah, was, that, I was yeah. terrified. The, the, the one jump scare in Insidious. The one, the, like arguably the greatest jump scare of all time. That particular one is the reason I'm picking this first because I think the movie is is pretty good. Aside from that, that's the best part of the movie for sure. And that scared the absolute bejesus out of me. So oh, yeah. I'm going to go with Insidious there. And at number two, or, or guys, any thoughts on Insidious before I? Um, I think they're both very good. You could have went Insidious 2 there. I have no problem with those two movies. Mm-hmm. I actually enjoy those movies. Because I, at that point in time, I did enjoy that type of movie. Mm-hmm. I'm just so fucking demon or whatever the fucked out that I can't do those movies. Okay. Even though I appreciate those movies and I like them. All right. So um, speaking of weird stuff, if uh, this was on my weird radar, this was the second thing here. If Andrew had actually picked Mothman Prophecies, which he did. <laughs> Anybody seen a movie called Fire in the Sky? Yes. Oh, yeah, the Actually, alien encounter one with like, the loggers. On because I knew that, the that one? if you had any pick above me, you'd pick it. That's a great movie. I honestly don't know that any movie has ever terrified me as much as this movie That's did. It's a spooky one. It's a really, really terrifying alien abduction movie that is based on a true story. And I listened to a podcast recently where the guy whose story it's based on this is this is this guy's story back in like uh 93 93 it's a fucking terrifying movie oh my god it's so scary. that's a great movie yeah and uh some of the alien alien abduction shit that's in it is so fucking scary uh, i can't even like relate to you how fucking scary it is as a fan of alien horror i think the thing might be my favorite thing ever pun intended my buddy uh, just sent me a snapshot alien. of him watching the thing. And I oh. was like, yes, yeah, so let's go. Kind of want to watch the thing like every day. And Alien is also <laughs> so awesome. But Fire in the Sky might be like the scariest, like actual, like if, if you listen to like the stories of what potentially have happened to people on Earth about alien abductions and stuff like that. It's rugged. This one might be like one of the scariest ones. And I've actually followed the case, like the actual case that the story was based on a lot which the the main guy is named uh, uh, Travis Walton. And supposedly this all really happened to him, which in and of itself is objectively terrifying, if that is the case. Now, could be full of shit. No, so here's my theory on that. He speaks at every UFO conference ever, but, you know, that's just a Quick theory on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could be full of shit, but think about what you're admitting to happening to you. Who's going to make that yeah, up? Yeah, getting your booty hole fucking... Yeah, little, that seems like a weird <laughs> thing, like a weird thing to be like, yeah. hey, guess how fucked up I am. And you're yeah. like, no, I'm, this is what happened. Why yeah, would it, you say that? Why would <laughs> yeah. you make that? Oh, you get attention? Yeah, bad attention. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, yeah. I feel bad. Yeah, but the, booty. This is one of those like nasty like 90s horror movies that's like, how was this possibly rated PG-13 and not rated R? It's really because fucking 90s. fucked. But it, it's got a bunch of those guy actors in it. So it's like D.B. Sweeney, <laughs> Robert Patrick, who I love, who was the uh, Terminator in Terminator 2. Like Anybody one, with like two first names, metal. usually a pretty good guy. 90s also the uh, brother of the lead singer of Filter, by the way, Richard Patrick, who used yep. to play in Nine of the Tales. Another uh, James Andrew. Garner, Craig Sheffer, Andrew, who was in Nightbreed. He's in this movie. Fantastic. So there's a lot of people. Henry Thomas is in this movie. Another so guy with some... two first names. <laughs> yep, so... Never trust Lots that. of good two first Henry names. Thomas. So... A uh, long way of me saying that my second pick, so it wouldn't have gotten picked by anybody else, was Fire in the Sky. A lot of, of this, I've seen this top a lot of lists of like most underrated, scariest movies that people watch. You, you that, need, like, you they need to watch. We're not old enough to watch. So, so. Uh, am I of the understanding that you have not seen this movie? No, I have. Oh, you have. Okay. I'm just right. saying I've seen this on lists, like people saying like this tops a lot of people's lists of being like this movie is low key. One of the most underrated, so disturbing, scary. fucked up movies. Of all so time. it's honestly so scary. Yeah. It scares me more than like any movie I've seen in probably the last like couple of years. Yeah. If I had to it's objectively say. All right, that means we're back to Andrew. So what else? What other, what other pick are you going to pick to break my heart? So right before now? I make this pick, I'm going to premise this. Like you both are going by, like oh, this movie very scary. Yeah, it's great premise to go off of. Doesn't have to be the. Premise. No, no, it doesn't. But so when I think about a PG-13 movie, to me. What are some of my favorite R-rated movies? 
they're usually cheesy, corny, fucking stupid movies, which I feel like if you're going to be a PG-13 movie, you got to be kind of cheesy, corny, fucking stupid. And one of my favorite cheesy, corny, fucking stupid R-rated movies is Thinner. So to me, the PG-13 version of that movie is Drag Me to Hell because it's very similar. It's very corny and it's very good. I love that movie. 100% deserves a pop too. Absolutely. It does. That movie's phenomenal. Justin Long's phenomenal. Um, Sam, Sam Raimi Ramey is phenomenal. Sam Raimi's <laughs> Sam Raimi's Samuel Romanel. <laughs> Romanel. Um, it's no, but it's, it's like if Sam Raimi made thinner. So you got the gypsy element to it. You got the fact Which that is, the fact that um, when she gives so, so, so I don't think so. Uh-huh. Why? I don't care now. Well, they're fucking like, gypsies. They're also Russian gypsies. I feel like I, you can't talk about for some, Russian. For people. some reason, it's offensive. What are they? That I don't really know. I don't I'm know. Not sure. Gypsams. There are Irish okay. gypsies too. They're in, There's uh, gypsies they're in, in every girls. Yeah. 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 So, okay. anyways, so basically, um, I think we're okay. I think it's a. It's I'm, a no, no, believe me. I've never brought it up to be like, no, we can't say that. I'm just saying, like, it's. I have the same idea. People like, find it like. No, so I compared to Finner because she puts a curse on him. She essentially gives him the gift of that quarter, like at the very beginning of the movie, like the foxy lady across the street, the foxy gypsy. <laughs> say that. Can I say that? Nope. Um, Run it. She gives him the coin. <laughs> but then also in this one, like, so he's a lawyer. She's a banker. They both do something that they find when they do it. Like they, they think that they're, they know they're guilty. They feel their guilt. So they're the entire movie, all the shit's happening for them. And the guilt is affecting them in a way that no one else can realize because they know what they did and they know that they are now cursed. Mm-hmm. And then some of the scenes are wild. Like with the scene when like the old woman that cursed her and she just shows up randomly at like the funeral mm. and the corpse falls on her and just all this green vomit starts mm. spraying down her mouth. <laughs> so yeah. they just, a lot of vomit. A lot, a lot yeah. of just mm. gross fucking stuff Big happens. Big time evil dead vibes. Dude, yeah. the very end of this movie too, like the final like when she's in the grave with her and the um, headstone cross falls down and smacks her on the head and she just gets knocked out and goes underneath the water. And you're like, Oh, she's dead. Yeah. And then like 30 seconds later, she just comes out. You're like, you're dead. Like how'd no, you get out dead. of there? That thing weighs 75 pounds. Yeah, there's so many yeah. scenes in that movie where it's just so corny and cheesy, but it's so well done. I love it. Wait, so what did you guys pick for your second pick? Uh, I, I haven't picked... had my second pick yet. Oh, uh, so I that's picked... your first pick? That's no, you picked no, no, no. Mothman Prophecy. I picked uh, Fire, Fire, in the Fire in the Sky and Insidious were my two picks. I was just okay. talking was about my second pick. pick for a solid two minutes. Yeah. That's, That's what it. I was just saying. I was yeah. like, is it your pick right now? Your second pick is. <laughs> when the hosts aren't paying us. Okay, and then your Fire in the Sky. Well, okay. What movie did I pick? Which one? Just now. Could, yeah, what did I just pick? thousand dollars right now. She can't million dollar question. Not a clue. Not. She couldn't name one. She couldn't name one. You were just talking about a movie, and I was like, wait, is it your pick again? It's funny, because yeah. she just said one of the names <laughs> before that, so she could have named at least one. <laughs> Sorry. You, you literally just said Mothman. Man. No, that's what you did in your first pick. Yeah. Because you got Mike really angry. Mm-hmm. That was bad. <laughs> I just yes. didn't realize. No, Ryan. That's okay. All right. Next pick. It's that means uh, Kat, we're up for, Scott. and now you already have The Grudge. I'm going to pick. The Ring. Krampus. Oh, that's such a good one. Mm. Mm. That's not rated R. No, no really. Believe it or not, That's sneaky surprising. pick. First yes. movie we ever covered in this podcast yep. many, many moons ago. Um, I'm not even. I mean, I'm not going to say years and directors, whatever. I love this movie. It's a seasonal watch. Tony Collette. Always. Tony Collette's in it. Adam Scott. The uh, monsters are awesome. Krampus is awesome. The whole story is great. Like it's. It's a fantastic horror movie. It's I didn't solid. even consider it Hands because down. I thought you were going to pick it, and I feel like it's a. Uh, it, it it is now a staple for me every yeah, Christmas season. Absolutely. It is a staple, yep. no doubt about it. I think it's the one of the most underrated Christmas horror movies of all time. People snooze on it all the time. It's so good. Yeah. Directed by Michael Doherty, yep. who did Trick or Treat, which that movie's mm-hmm. fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is an extension of that universe. Not enough people have seen Krampus. Yeah. In my opinion. So that's my pick. What was your pick? Krampus. The first movie we ever covered on this podcast, Krampus from 2015. Krampus. Which Krampus means that we're Krumple Foreskin. To Matt Krumple for two. Foreskin. For two, huh? Mm-hmm. 
two. All right. Well, I'm going to have to go with uh, 1982, a Toby Hooper film called Poltergeist. Oh, that's a big one. When I was a little kid, this movie was scary. The Not so much no more. Scene, but no, I think the the face melting scene in the uh, in the bathroom still that holds up. That's fucking that that gets into two different elements of being a scared to look at and b that's a body horror thing of being like, oh my god, my fucking face is falling apart. Um, Poltergeist rocks. There, this is still it holds up. It's a good movie. It's entertaining. It's got the Steven Spielberg vibe because he produced it. But it's it's it really really is a well made fucking movie. It's clean. Oh, cut. I love them. It's fucking. It's a it's a perfect horror movie through and through. So the great debate: who directed this movie, Toby Hooper or Steven Spielberg? Spielberg. Yeah, I mean Steven Spielberg did, but Toby Hooper has the credit title. So it's all in the They don't apparently. Oh, no, they, yeah, Spielberg, they yeah. they butted heads. They're two different directors. Yeah. So Toby Hooper came this off of doing. Didn't feel like he came Hooper off of doing Funhouse yeah. and fucking like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Spielberg did Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Close kind Encounters of the Third Kind. That's what this movie yeah. felt. It felt like a demon. In Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It was the same fucking movie. Right. Just a thought. It's a good movie, though. Yeah, I like Poltergeist. It's. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure. I was sure someone was going to pick Poltergeist. Yeah, I tonight, forgot. So. I mean, okay. I, just, I, I was I not going to pick it because I figured that, that somebody else. That could have been a number one. It, that it could be should, one, number one. Number I would say, one. arguably, could that's be, like a Derrick Henry. Yeah, people are snoozing on it. Yeah. Like, could be a huge. That's like people that take Bijan Robinson to Twitter. It does. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a third uh, football reference. We've Is that right? Um, All right? So what else? You have now Exorcism of Emily Rose and Poltergeist. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, this is, to me, Wait, I think. it's four picks? Yeah. Four. Okay, good. All right. This is, to me, what I think is the, oh, that movie's only rated PG. Uh, 1978, a Philip Kaufman film starring Donald Sutherland, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers remake. That's another nice. number one, number one. That's You have two first round picks in there. I thought this movie was rated R my whole life. And then you watch it. I can't believe it though. Yeah, you have not seen that movie. It's rated PG. It's rated PG, but you watch. I recently watched it. There is nothing in it that's except just the content. Yeah, I feel like right. The content. There's really no like (laughs) swearing. There's no blood. It's just just, I figured it just was rated R because it's terrifying. Yeah. So um, children can watch. I love this movie. I love the original Body Snatchers movie. I think that's also great. Uh, there was a further remake in the 90s called just called Body Snatchers. That's also good. This one's my favorite. That one's actually really good. Uh, this one's my favorite. Donald Sutherland nailed it. Killed it. In every movie he's every horror movie he was in in the 90s or not in the 90s in the 70s. This one. Don't look now. He's in so many other fucking things. But those two specifically are fucking immaculate movies. It's his um, face. Well, he does a good job. He's yeah. got that. He 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 acts well. Like he's able to show emotion with his his just eyes, just looking, just yeah. his eyes. Um, but this movie was fucking legit. This one really, they did a good job. The effects are fucking on point. It really captures the paranoia of what the situation is of not knowing who's who and what's what and this that and the other thing. It's a good alien movie. It's a sneaky fucking alien movie. And it's a sneaky PG rated. It's movie. fantastic. Yeah, it's that's that's one of the best movies ever made. Doesn't matter what it's. Yeah, rated. I think Wild it's, PG, yeah. at least be PG. But I don't even think. And also, one of the best endings in, ever. Did PG thirteen yeah. even exist? Then? All of the all they all have good endings. Yeah, every version of it. So I feel like that had to have been rated PG. If not right no, that's what I said. I said, I said there's no. It was before PG thirteen. It could no, no, be no. adjusted to be PG thirteen now. If but I, it was not rated R. If I'm so not we're watching this, we're watching the this birds birds is was rated PG thirteen. If I'm <laughs> that came out in the sixty three. So. If I'm correct, I think the two movies that created the PG thirteen movie system were Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom mm-hmm. and Poltergeist. Mm-hmm. I think were the two movies. That makes sense. Yep. Pretty much two Spielberg Thanks, movies Spielberg. being like, yeah. hey, maybe these uh, shouldn't be just like, you know, any any person with parental guidance. Maybe it'll be 13. Too. Yeah. All right. So Invasion of the Body Snatchers with Donald Sutherland off the board for Matthew. Catherine, that means that you're up. Let's go. I'm going to go with The Sixth Sense. It's fantastic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, Good pick. Because I feel like when I was a kid, when I watched it, I'm not going to, you know, directors here, so I didn't, I just, I put a list of movies. 
So I just remember watching it, obviously, for the first time, and you get the twist at the end. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then, like, then you go back and you watch it again because then you find out about all the pictures, like, the red As the you're symbolism, watching it, you're like... And then you're like, oh, wow. Okay. wow. Yeah. Oh, so that's, like, a movie that's automatically, you're like, I need to watch this again. Yeah. And you always remember, like, that it was so good because of the twist at the end, like, that you didn't see it coming. Like, you remember the first time you watched it, you're like, oh, that was such a good twist. Another Tony Collette movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I didn't even yep. think of that. Yeah, right. um, Tony. I do actually. Tony. I kind of subconsciously love Tony Collette. Like I, I just everything Tony's she's in. I'm like, me. I love that. She's a good actress. She's so, awesome. So. She's amazing. Yeah, great movie through and through. Total like childhood nostalgic, and um, it was a good PG-13 movie that I remember watching as a kid and I really liked. And it's like trans transpired, like withheld the test of time, and mm -hmm. I feel like is it holds up. It's a let, good gateway. Let, movie. Yeah. let me, let me give you a counterpoint sure on that. counterpoint um i think it's a movie you could see twice and beyond that the the twist wears off and it's nowhere near as good but and it's a good pass down movie absolutely oh, yeah. yes but i'm saying like as an adult it, seeing it that movie when is the yeah. last time you've ever watched the sixth sense when i was like that's that, that's yeah. like a borderline horror movie no, that's a word. I'm that's, a, that's, that's, that's a horror I'm, movie, I'm willing yeah. to say Unbreakable's more That's a of scary ghost no story. Way. Yeah, well, Unbreakable's 100% more scary. I don't think so. This is like children's scary. The other one's like, there's like weird shit going on. They got the guys. The guy's got his daughter and kids like trapped in the closet. Oh. I there's a lot that. of fucked Maybe up shit you, in Unbreakable. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Subjective. But then a ghost, a little scary boy. Excuse me, well, well, I mean, <laughs> hey, six cents. No, it's a good like movie. Casper, like it. I'm just fucking with you. Movies. I think it's a scary. It's a good movie. Just I feel like movie. Six Sense for a long time was like kind of the king of PG-13 horror. Got nominated for best picture. At well, the I mean, Oscars. like the first like, scene, it's a guy in the bathroom with a gun. Like, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. yeah, it's yeah. that's a scary. Yeah, that's it's the a heavy scariest movie. part yeah. of the entire yeah. movie. Exactly. One of the moron Wahlbergs in that movie playing the. You know, I think you were correct with the first one. It's said. funny the way that played out. It's like, where is he going with this? God, the Wahlbergs suck. Anyway, but Six Sense is a very good pick. I mean, they got Wahlbergs. It's, it's great not pick. Mark, it's Donnie. Donnie's in it. I said one of the Wahlbergs. Oh, I was like, not Mark Wahlberg. Okay. I thought, you don't like Donnie Wahlberg either? I hate anyone with Who the name Who likes Wahlberg? Donnie Wahlberg? I mean, he's good in <laughs> Saw, too. Mm. No, he's a dickhead. No, he's no, terrible. He's good. Yeah. He's a good actor. The shit that no, he's, he's not. not no, he, he, he let his kid die. If he was a good actor, he would have had like a real role in some movie. Other he, than he would have been in The saw. Departed instead. He had one of the best <laughs> deaths in Saw with the ice blocks. Yeah. Smash his head. Fuck him. Yeah, he was good for a head to explode. Oh my God. That's what he was good for. He's good for All right, so last saw. pick, by the way, was uh, The Sixth Sense to Cat. And now we're to Andrew. Uh, so, staying in line with what Cat just said. Mm hmm. A lot of people are going to question this pick. Maybe people don't like this movie. I think it's highly underrated for a PG-13 movie. Also an M. Night Shyamalan movie. I Spin it out. Devil. I love Devil. Oh, okay. Oh, Devil. I, I think Devil is so I thought you were going to say well, something. I, 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 I think Shines. Whoa, I, I thought I you were going to say okay. I think Devil's really good. Why? It's like borderline a... It could be a creep show, creep show episode. It is could be a Twilight one? Zone. Yeah, it could yeah. be a Twilight Zone episode. It's so well done. Like the twist at the end is very good and it's very minimal, but it's just, there's barely any blood, but there's actually a lot of blood and it's pretty fucked up. You seen Devil? I have. Not a big fan? No? Nope. Like the movie a lot. Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. Yep. I, yeah, I just feel like it goes under the radar for M. Night Shyamalan movies. I think it's definitely like one of his top three. Like Signs, Unbreakable, then Devil. Really? So six six sense falls out. I, that, like wow. you said, like that movie's fine, but it's 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 Zero over. It's value. overhyped. Yeah, yeah. it's oh, made out to be some phenomenal. It's the rewatch value that just Dude, that the village is better than zero. Uh, no, 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 no. All right, so why don't we keep glasses the glasses uh, old? Why don't why don't we keep the? Because uh, I feel like we haven't talked about this guy a lot. Yeah, but I trouble ever. on a big bog. Why don't we keep the M Night Shyamalama Ding Dong conversation going? Because I'm picking signs with my next pick. That's that, fantastic. That was and on my list. honestly, yeah. I think again, Alien Horror, Mike stuff, wonderful Joaquin Phoenix performance. He's that great. might be I love him. He's pre awesome. pre Mel Gibson anti Semitic meltdown. Well, yep, yeah. that's also true. <laughs> That one scene with Joaquin Phoenix in the closet might be with one the Hershey, of the best yeah. with the jump scares cat? of all time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And it's just so for that basic. A lot that when he's so watching the yeah, yes. Vomitos, 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 vomitos. He's so good. 
it's so it's so good and then when it happens you're like you you are him you yeah. are him you're and like, you're like oh oh oh, oh my god yeah. oh my fucking god like holy shit yeah that that's a scare right there so but what's so weird about the scare again. is it's such a basic boring scare yet it's done so perfectly well that it scares you every time queen phoenix Makes that scene though. He makes it scary because it's really not that scary of a scene. Yaqueen. Anything else on signs, you guys? Yeah, quiz. Uh this the scene where they they're first running out on the house on the roof. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. And then the cornfield. Well, finding the crop, the crop circles is that's any oh, that's, always creepy. that's frightening. Oh, always yeah. creepy. Crap yeah. cycles, you know. Crap cycles. Crap cycles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we covered that movie on the podcast. We did. Uh, well, Crap cycles. <laughs> I mean, did you really even do a less than R-rated horror draft if you haven't picked multiple M Night Shyamalan movies? Because I feel like that's oh the yeah, way you do. Yeah, one hundred percent. All right, so my last pick is a movie that we covered on the podcast very early on, uh, very much before Matt was on the show. Uh, this is the only movie that we've ever seen ever in the Wareham movie theater Under before it went out oh, of rental whoa. service. Oh, I almost picked this. It's called oh. Underwater. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a fantastic oh, fucking movie. Stupid. People snoozed in this movie so hard, it's criminal. Well, they should be. It um, puts you to sleep. This is a movie that was <laughs> shot years ago, and then when Disney was acquiring Fox, this got fucking pretty much stomped on and said like Kristen hey, Stewart. Here's correct? a January yeah. movie. Yeah, Kristen Stewart. I, I remember this movie because I hated this movie so much. Um, if I remember can, all of it. If you can deal with the fact that this movie is actually a knockoff or a very much inspired by a movie that looks at Alien and says, hey, Alien's great. Why don't we try and do that underwater? Which is the title of the movie. The movie's great. I fucking love that movie. I thought it was awesome. Andrew's always had a negative opinion about Kristen Stewart, I have to say. Oh, I loved her in that movie, though. But she breathed she through was, her mouth. She all was the actually time. Like, very tolerable in this movie. <laughs> and so honestly, great. Great underwater creatures. Great ending. Very inventive PG 13 kills. Very love I feel like yeah. Every, Yep. Oh, yeah. Very love craft. Yeah. Yep. I feel like every single one of the kills in this felt like it should not have been in a PG-13 movie. So it's one of those movies that I always thought about. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that dude's head just got crushed by water pressure. That's pretty awesome. Let's fucking... All right, let's go. Is that awesome? Not for him. For me, watching, it was. (laughs) Anyway, so, yep, I'm taking uh, Underwater, so... That's my last pick. That's my fourth pick. I have fantastic my team, pick. Fantastic. Which means we're going back to Boy. Mr. Andrew. It's a million different ways Mr. I can go here. I had, I had like a lot of these movies, mm-hmm. but I go back in my head and I go, what movie do I rewatch weirdly a lot? And it's one starring Johnny Depp, John Totoro, Maria Bello, Secret Window. I love that movie. Very good. good. That's a wow. movie. That's a PG-13 movie. Ooh, I really like phenomenal. that movie too. I love that story. That's a Stephen King story, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Secret That's Garden. Really sure is. Good. One of Johnny Depp's sure best is. acting roles. Yes. It's called uh, Secret Window, Secret Garden. Dead Dog movie. movie. Yes. No, it's, it's a dead dog movie. The movie is called Secret Window. There's one thing about a dead dog movie, but if they show you the dead dog, that's fucked up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which it just reminded me of the Matrix movie. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Which it just reminded me of a made-for-TV movie called Cabin by the Lake. I think Emilio Estevez was in it, or his lookalike, <laughs> and that's actually oh, very <laughs> underrated. Um, so don't forget about that. But yeah, Secret Brother. Windows, absolutely phenomenal. There's just a lot about that movie that's really it's just well written, well directed. It's a very basic story. It takes place in like two or three different scenes. It's just so well. And Johnny Depp kills that, and John Turturro is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, John Turturro in that movie is really good. So also Timothy Hudson's in that movie too. He is. Yeah, he's the lover for Maria Bello. Uh, Maria oh. Bello. Bello? Bello? I'm Brian sure. Bello? Brian Bello? <laughs> You'd have to ask her. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a great movie. Okay. Kath, that means you're up for your fourth and final pick. It is my turn. <sighs> All right. What do I pick? Um, I'm going to go with A Quiet Place. Um. <laughs> No, it's not that quiet. No, I really. No, you know it's what? a snoozer, though. 
It's not a snoozer. How do you snooze when you watch this movie? It is so like I was literally on the edge of this. My the first seat time I saw this movie, time. I was also with Cat on the edge of my seat. I, um, now I just, this this movie stinks. I think. <laughs> sorry. Okay. It's like Bird. Box. I'm really sorry. I just Go ahead. think, and even like Quiet Place too. No, Bird Box was great too. That was no. I actually thought Bird that. Bird Box, same movie. Just smells. Of See, I Bird it's Box is fight worse. There's also a movie called The Quiet Ones, starring Stanley Tucci. Check that one the out. One with the so, bats. Yeah, okay, that's the okay. same mm. fucking movie. But, 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 but. I'll say this probably stems from my fear of like the woods and stuff. Anyway, because all they're doing the is creeping around in the woods, and there's monsters in there, which I'm also scared of. Maybe a monster or an animal or a bear <laughs> or a man, bear, pig. Oh man, I, mean, I don't and know. Bears are the same but thing. yes, so I thought that this was particularly terrifying, especially when I saw it in the movie theater. It may not hold up as much on streaming. But I do think that in the movie theater, it was very well captured. So, did you think it was scary because you don't know how to be quiet? Is that what exactly yeah, that okay. too? And well, and well, I don't even twenty twenty one. I was not bridging on the thing. So, no, I was gonna say well, not that. But anyways, um, it was weird that she like she had a baby and a de- like the whole situation. This movie didn't come out in twenty twenty one. So much anxiety. I thought it was twenty twenty one. Wasn't it? Came out in like twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Okay, yeah. Whatever. Quiet Place 2 came out. But the amount of stress she has with a baby and a, a, a daughter that's deaf, that's insane. Like, insane. Like, insanity. Like, it's, I don't understand how this is not a scare. That's where like, you need Miss Rachel. That's why I have so much anxiety. And I had so much anxiety watching this movie, like, the entire time. I probably would again, because it's just like, I know, you know what's going to happen. Whatever. Anyways, sorry. I'm ranting now. Uh, Quiet Place by the way, 2018, 2013, 2018. Winner! <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yes. All right, that's Continue. it. Continue. Go, go on the chlorophyll. I'm done. I was just ranting. It really Guys. didn't mean anything, so. Anyone yeah, else have thoughts on Quiet Place? Because I, I actually I, did see I it. Don't I don't like saw, this movie at all. I mean, yeah. I, I saw it in theaters. I, it came like out. It. I feel like it was I like. I don't like this movie. It's I fine. forget which. So Get Out, I think, was 2017. And Quiet Place was 2018. But Imagine, like those were the two, two like, horror movie events yeah. at theaters. Way the to go. End. John Krasinski wrote a movie with zero dialogue. Right. <laughs> and I remember both those things theater experiences they're both awesome well, here's just like here's emily blunt look at her here's my wife <laughs> but like i feel like a quiet place again is the biggest movie like ever that declines after the first viewing it's just, like it's all about the experience yeah. right so it's like yeah even was just like i found it boring just from the I beginning like it wasn't like it wasn't anything it wasn't bad but it wasn't good i, it was just, I, I thought it was, it was like boring. here's an idea yeah. and then i'm not going to put any effort towards it there you go I mean, Every, it's just everyone going. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to. It's a good way to not write dialogue. Yeah, like I've never been in. Yeah, it was. It was a movie of just this. I never saw. <laughs> <laughs> <But> I <laughs> never. <laughs> it never. It's pretty funny when people never make fun of that movie because you just, like, you have to laugh. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right, so Matt, good. that means we're on to you. For All right, well, last pick, my friend, and that's the end of the draft. After that, let's go. We didn't omit any movies, right? No, this was non omission. Jaws. Uh, yeah. oh, I was like, wow. I feel like that was just like I so just, lay I mean, up. I, like lay up. I, that's, that's, that would have been wins. my layup. The draft now. I mean, do you Jesus do you know Christ, who I am? That would have been my, my layup first. Well, yeah, I didn't put the ring. Yeah, I, I was just like, like we've I was gonna try and do different. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't have to be Jaws, dude. No, no, you picked it. Go ahead. I like this. I want. I want one of the scariest. I want one of your wild. That's the scariest movie it's out of alive. every By single movie. Larry Owen in the one with the weird oh, the monster the, baby. Oh, you also ha- I also have uh, The Birds. Awesome. But I'm nice. like, yeah. Like, it's bird. I have The Birds written down, yeah. too. By the way, Jaws is scary. Gremlins would have been my movies. other pick, if not Jaws. <sighs> Gremlins is... Are we going to do our uh, runner-ups? Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Matt, 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 I'm not going to go in about Jaws. All right, so Matt, Matt went first. Yeah, uh, so it's just a finish. It's you back to Matt. Yeah, you finish. Cat, go. For honorable mentions. Yep. Um, I have the ring. Duh. Can't believe you didn't pick that. I've well, because I've, I've picked the ring for different drafts. It doesn't. I don't want to keep doing the same thing. Um, ten Cloverfield Lane. Good one. Mm-hmm. Happy Death Day. I knew. You I were thought you were surprised that, that would be your number and one. And Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh. I mean, Killer Clowns is a, a great pick, but it's again not a scary movie. It's still right. really well. That's why it's my honorable mention. Like cult movie. Yeah. Right. All right, Andrew, go. I only have a couple. A couple. So I have the gate. 
Mm-hmm. Stephen Dorff, oh, okay. old movie, oh, so old movie. Okay. Uh, Willard, Dorf. Crispin Glover. It's a fucking weird movie. Crispin. Yep, sure uh, is. The Witches, the mm-hmm. Roald Dahl movie yeah. the, from the eighties. That one was good. Roald Dahl, um, and I think that's it. Yeah, that was uh, Red Eye Two with Killian West Murphy Graven. and uh, West Craven movie. Yep, West Craven. Killian Murphy and Rachel McAdams. I also had on my list. Sorry to interrupt. The Haunting with uh, Catherine Zeta Jones and, and Liam Neeson. Owen Wilson. And Owen Wilson. Yes, no, oh, I, I love that, that movie. I yeah. would have picked. There's a ghost in here. There's a lot of 50s <laughs> movies I would have picked, but they were not rated, and I didn't want them much. Yeah, more. but those were definitely PG. Yeah, I would have done like House on Haunted Hill, yeah, the original PG. Haunting, um, Maybe anything with Vincent Price in it. The only person that might know this is Kat, the Tony Shalhoub, Shane Elizabeth. 13, 13 ghosts. ghost movie that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. pg-13 or rated r right r, that's r that, that's, that's, gotta, be that might be that's r. gotta be r i think there's a lot of nudity okay. in there yeah but one of the ghosts has a boob though yeah um which makes it my right. honorable mentions well, that i didn't pick again in an artsy way in an artsy way he's painting her areolas it's not like wacky uh so my two honorable sex in a car on the boat that's cool just my uh, glass. Yeah. I'm listening, Mike. Sorry, good. and that one's the uh, My honorable mentions, by the way, were uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. Yes. Very good. They're really scary. Actually, that movie was pretty goddamn scary. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> the books traumatized, traumatized, traumatized me. Yeah, those are creepy as fuck. And uh, Mama, which is a uh, Del Toro produced Another one that story. Yeah. no one mentioned was 14 you know. 1408. I think I, you would have. Yeah. That. You love that movie. Um, 13 goes. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. It's okay. okay. It's John okay. Uh, the Skeleton Key? You didn't mention it. No one mentioned the others. Mentioned. Oh, the nope. others is. I, I can't actually, believe that you didn't pick I that. I actually cap, really like the Skeleton Key. Kate Hudson? Yeah. yeah that's With the New Orleans vibe? Yeah. yeah that's I like that movie. movie. But I feel like if I watch, I haven't seen that movie in maybe. I have it on DVD. You want to borrow it? No, I feel like if I watch it now, I'll be like, this movie's terrible. I don't know. Oh no, it's probably great. Mm. I need to rewatch it. I haven't watched it in a very long time. But. It has Kate Hudson in it. Yeah, but the, the whole vibe with it is cool. <laughs> Dude, what is yeah. this, ten ten ways to lose a guy. The story. Or no, ten how to lose a guy in ten days. Yes. But ten ways to lose the whole New Orleans like voodoo thing. It's it's cool. The backstory is the backstory is fun. Yeah, it's good. She's got that voodoo mama. Like she's like the house. She's like a housekeeper. Yes. It's and she's like watching this right. old lady with like millions of dollars in her weird plantation yes yes yeah yeah yeah, i know that movie it's a good movie i like that movie pretty good go on (laughs) (laughs) what go on you guys were just talking talking about go on you've seen it i have it on dvd it's in the bookcase we're gonna watch it now all right fair enough uh, could everybody state their teams if we uh, go back through the order that we oh, yes. did real quick? Uh, yes. Matt, why don't we start with you? You had first pick. He's Your got pick picks. first. You remember, I can uh, show you on screen if you need. I have The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Sure did. I have Poltergeist, uh, the Toby Hooper one, of course. Correct. The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 78 version. And then I have Jaws, which was just a fucking Hang low-hanging out. fruit. <laughs> yeah. You got to take yep. it. Yep. Yeah. Take wow. It. I didn't even look at it. Wow. I considered that a keeper. I figured it was going to be Mike's first pick. All right. So there's one oh, team. I, I mean, I was trying to not See, do obvious all, stuff. We were all yeah. going to I was, well, that's why I asked if there was right. any omits. No, yeah. there wasn't. No, I, I, so yeah, you played no. fair. You know, yeah. you, 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 you did. You did. All right. First uh, Kat, you're up next. What's your I team? I picked The Grudge. You sure and did. And then Camp It. Campus. Campus. <laughs> Camp it. Camp it. Campus. Camp, campus. Campus. You're trying to sell us like some Krampus. weird campus <laughs> turns into something. Um, and then the Sixth Sense and a Quiet Place. Why does everything you say sound like a question? Um, moving on. Because <laughs> that's cause, correct. Cause it is. Because it is. Um, Which means we're on to Andrew. Because I'm reading. Why don't you talk about that Campus. fucking stupid first round pick uh, you made that fucked you up? I, mean, I took out the man of the moths. Uh, the moth man. The moth man. Yep. I took Drag Me to Hail. And then I took Devil. And then I took Secret Winder. Okay. That's good luck. All, All tracks with what I had on. Nice. Uh, on for you, my friend. So I took Insidious, directed by James Wan. I also took Fire in the Sky from the early 90s. I took Signs by M. Night Shyamalan. A ding dong. And Underwater, which fucking rocks. Yes. Underrated. Underrated. Yeah. But uh, those are our picks. 
Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you love them? Do they smell? I gotta love say, bang. I love my pick. I love my picks as well. <laughs> I love oh. my picks as well. Wow. Well. I think I gotta say that. Guys, but uh, anything else on this draft before we sign off for the evening, my friends? I think that's about it. No. Keep track of your picks. Well, I mean, here's what I will say is that uh, coming up in the next few weeks, we have a lot of uh, big time things going on for Haunted Attractions. Mm -hmm. Probably trivia next week. Dope horror movies. That trivia Matt and I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, we're doing all of those things in the coming weeks because you know what? Guess what? We are in spooky season. We fucking sure are. So cinder block on the gas pedal. Yep. And if you like our show, you want to give us a review, give us a five star review on Apple or Spotify. That'd be great. Otherwise, hey, show up and uh, do some trivia with me and Matt. Do some haunted attractions with all of us. Whatever works for each and, and every and one of you. And yeah. come to Haunts and Hops at Mayflower Brewing. Hops and Hops. Yes. But I uh, hope you guys had fun with us tonight. Uh, my name is Mike. I've been joined by my co-hosts, Andrew, Matt, and Kat. Hops and Are we capable of saying good evening? <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Okay. Hops and Hops. Hops Hop and Hops. Hop and hop. Hops and hops. And uh, good evening. Bye, good guys. Evening. Bye. 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 Smell ya. Hey, everyone. It's Mike from America's Hometown Horror, and I want to say thanks again for listening to another episode of our show. If you're interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I'd highly recommend you check out the shows from our friends over on the Inebriart Podcast Network. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find shows from Inebriart, The Old Colony Cast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, and Retro Redoctopus. So head on over and give them a listen.